Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss a view from America's Wall Street analysts from the Bank of America that Brexit could turn the UK into what is termed an emerging economy. Oh, that sounds like such a happy little creature. Yeah, it's not. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So what is an emerging economy, first of all? It's essentially used to describe the economy of a developing nation as it connects itself to global markets. Not really it's supposed to be used to describe one of the wealthiest nations in the world. And you can sort of see why the term would be used to apply to Brexit Britain, because after all, at the moment, we currently enjoy advantageous trade agreements with most of the world and all of the world's major economies. On January the 1st, 2021, that's really going to change. We will have no trading agreements with any of the top 10 largest economies on Earth and precious few below that. Switzerland would be the most notable in terms of agreement, but that is just a copy of what we have now. South Korea is a larger economy, um, but because of the distance, we don't trade as much, so it's less important market. That's not to ignore it, we do export nearly four billion pounds worth of goods there. Now at this point, I was thinking that well, we're still one of the top 10 economies, so that's at least one country we can trade with on better than WTO terms. Except then I was starting to think, oh, well, because uh, Boris Johnson's put this big old trade barrier between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. That means that even trading with ourselves is soon going to be on worse terms than it is right now. Brexit has literally meant that we can't even trade freely with ourselves. But in general terms, for the largest economies, it means world trade and organization terms for trading with the United States, China, Japan, Germany, India, France, Italy, Brazil, and Canada, the other top 10 economies. Of course, like I said, the size of the economy is important, but what matters most is who we can trade the most with. And in those terms, the largest trading partnership that we are continuing in 2021 with is Switzerland. Uh, there are seven countries that we trade more with, for which we'll have nothing at all. And it makes no difference how optimistic or otherwise you are about the chances of replacing those hundreds of trade agreements quickly when we haven't even managed the three that we targeted for completion this year as yet. The fact is that we are losing agreements with the vast majority of the most important markets on Earth. That part is beyond dispute. That means that the UK will be seeking to connect itself to global markets in 2021. Hence the tag, I suppose, emerging economy. And as Boris Johnson is all about being the best in the world, you could argue we will have by far the biggest economy of any nation to have earned the tag emerging economy. But... These analysts are not saying that this is going to be uh, uh, instant. They're not going to say, oh, in January 2021, Britain is going to be an emerging economy. No, no, no. This is a long term view. Although the Bank of America analysts are suggesting that investors maybe consider thinking of the British pound as the currency of an emerging market, uh, emerging economy rather, because the pound has been tumbling in value against both the euro and the dollar since 2016 Brexit referendum, which tells you all you need to know about those who understand how to make money, what they think of Brexit. The fluctuations in the pound in this time have been described by one of these analysts as, and I quote, neurotic at best, unfathomable at worst. Of course, I'd, I'd maybe venture that it's only unfathomable if you assume that a government's concern is for their country, when we've been run by three prime ministers on the bounce now who have deliberately shafted their country for their own private political ambitions, then it suddenly, to my mind anyway, becomes fathomable. So our economy had already shrunk in comparative terms since the Brexit referendum and will continue to do so as we go forwards or I suppose backwards. And what this highlighted for me was just how long term these economists see the damage being to Britain. Because, like I said, they're not saying we're going to become an emerging economy in January. 
They said that the pound remains a major currency. The Bank of England is also trusted internationally, which is crucial. Bonds are still considered something of a safe bet. So we know that our credit rating has been downgraded twice since 2016, but it is still on the A rating. This is because if confidence was shaken in the currency, normally this would be a disaster. But people would expect under those circumstances the Bank of England to step in. But the view is still that over time, Brexit and our poor response to COVID, was also mentioned, are going to make it impossible to sustain our economy and to sustain the measures we're able to take. And that deficit that David Cameron pretended austerity was going to deal with, which has never been brought under control by the Conservatives, I mean, of course not, because their fiscal policies kept funneling money out of the economy and into offshore bank accounts. Our deficit for this year is expected to exceed £300 billion. Now, that could trigger interest rate increases if inflation shoots up. It was noted that the combination of our current account deficit, which is the negative difference between the value of our exports and those of our imports. Remember, we make money by exporting. We spend money by importing. As well as our fiscal deficit, which is the one we, you know, when you talk about deficit, the one that most people would understand, which is the negative difference between what the government spends compared with what it brings in you know, taxes, investments, that sort of thing. So taking those two deficits into account together, we are going to be in worse shape next year than Mexico or Turkey, countries considered to be emerging economies. And, you know, I'm reading these and, and I think to myself, well, I mean, part of the reason we're in this mess is because our government have made decisions that have led to this. Whether they did so maliciously, knowing what they were doing, or because they just didn't listen to the right advice, I can't say for certain. But imagine if we had a government that made all the correct decisions from now on. They took the best economic advice and followed that advice. We're in such a bad situation now that it would still take a long time to recover and could still get worse before it gets better. So then I remember that actually what we do have is a Prime Minister who doesn't do detail, who listens only to Dominic Cummings and Tory donors, the former being an expert in nothing at all apart from confidence tricks and the latter being interested only in lining their own pockets and not the country at all. So I'm forced to accept that. If any correct decisions are taken at all it will only be by accident and therefore we are not going to make all the correct decisions from here on in. So in inevitably the situation will surely become worse than even the predictions. So how much worse can the situation really get? Because another thing that constantly strikes me, I, I do like to read these economic analyses. And whenever I do read them um, about the UK, and it makes no difference whether it's a group based in the UK or, as in this case, overseas, they all work on the assumption whenever they're going through their reasoning for their conclusions, they all work on the assumption that we're going to agree at least a basic trade agreement with the EU. All of them. And it's like they won't even bring themselves to consider the scenario if we don't. Because huh, who would be mad enough to leave the EU without even a bare bones agreement at least? So there we go. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. Until next time, I'll see you later.